Hey friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Bianca and I recently had a conversation with a friend who was sharing about the imposter syndrome that she was experiencing at her current job. To provide some context, my friend actually came from a technical background and was just really worried about whether her lack of business and finance knowledge would make her a liability. This worry eventually caused her to decline the company's offer to make her a partner. I won't lie, her story really surprised me as I initially thought that most people would have just immediately said yes to such an opportunity. But after interacting with several people in the field, I eventually came to realise that my friend was actually not alone, as a few people have also shared their concerns about whether their engineering or law backgrounds are even relevant to VC. So in this video, I just thought of sharing a little bit about why I believe that having a technical background can actually prepare you really well for a career in VC. And okay, if I just want to like activate my accountant mood, I can say with much confidence that you'll be an asset, not a liability. Let's get right into it. So the first point I'd like to make right here is that building an investment thesis is largely a scientific process. You could quite literally equate it to performing scientific research in some way. If you were to draw parallels between VC and science, both parties will most probably start with this. First things first, you simply pick an area of interest. So let's just say digital health in Southeast Asia. Next in line, you just ask yourself a simple question. So let's just say in the VC's case, is there an investment opportunity in the digital health sector? You then formulate a hypothesis. So for instance, I think there is an investment opportunity for Southeast Asian tech companies that are really good at scaling skincare brands. And the reason for this uh, theory is that well, South Asians are highly dependent on trust. So persistent conditions such as acne would help brands to just buy time to build relationships with their consumers. You then form questions and design experiments to test your hypothesis. For instance, you could try to talk to dermatologists or go onto LinkedIn to find experts in this area. Or you could try to just study the consumer purchasing trends in your country to just figure out if people are buying specific skincare brands for a good reason. You could also try to check out industry reports to see if there are any interesting patterns in Southeast Asia. Or you can also try some available products out there and try to talk to your customers to gather their feedback. And then you can just bring all of these findings together to figure out if there's something juicy that you can extract out of all these. And in most of these cases, you also probably need to just keep pressure testing your ideas to just see if your outcome remains consistent with your hypothesis. And once all of that is done, you can then share and propose your ideas with others. So now that if you want to tie all of this back to VC, so once you're confident with your findings, you can then present your investment thesis to the team and just be really prepared to defend your ideas. And once everything has been like agreed upon, you can then start hunting for startups that fit well with your mandate. So as you can see, VC investing doesn't necessarily mean that you're completely departing from the nitty gritty components of scientific investigation. In fact, the research skills that you develop from your technical background will continue to follow you throughout your investment journey. And well, hopefully, all these skill sets should be able to teach you to think more objectively about the kinds of companies and industries that you're going to be throwing money at, as opposed to just following all the hype in the market. Now, moving on, I do also hold the belief that having a technical background can also help you to build relationships with technical founders far earlier than most investors. To provide some context, I have actually met many founders who are actually running really good businesses. Their track record is impressive, the team's superb, the CEO is a visionary, but the problem is, the founder is not really good at pitching. Where the common problem is that many of these technical founders tend to forget that what's common sense to them in terms of say the technical jargon may not necessarily be common sense to the lay audience. So a loss in translation can happen, but that doesn't actually mean that the business is not investable. But if you happen to be well-versed with all of the technical jargons, it will almost be as if you can speak this uncommon language. And this gives you the advantage of being able to start conversations with technical founders early on when they haven't perfected their pitches yet. Besides that, having a technical background can also help you to develop empathy for them. It lets you better understand the specific problem that they're trying to resolve 
especially if that problem is a really complicated one. So in the long run, all of these technical skill sets can help you to capture opportunities way before non-technical investors. At the end of the day, some of these technical founders are actually extremely smart and capable people. It's just that they can be often very easily underestimated, especially if they lack experience in storytelling. Now, moving on to my final point, since having a technical background would usually give you an analytical bent of mind, I would say that ingesting data followed by critiquing it would be something that you are pretty accustomed to. Other than that, the general skill set that you gain from a more technical work experience, such as taking a really broad and complex problem, followed by breaking them down into more manageable questions that you can address within a reasonable time frame, will definitely serve you incredibly well in BC. So let's just say you used to work in operations, or heck, okay, as a doctor, you probably have been really used to juggling many moving pieces at once. Having solid organizational skills, as well as the ability to just make rational decisions under a really time pressure environment, shouldn't be something that scares you anymore. Or if you happen to have worked as an engineer before, I'm pretty sure you have already learned the importance of being super precise, especially if you're someone who have to design cars and buildings in the past. So these are all the skill sets that you can pretty much translate really easily to VC investing. Because trust me, I would even say that solving business problems are actually not all that different from solving the technical ones. Okay, just that maybe business problems wise, there's a bit more of an artistic element to it. Or there's just maybe a bit more of an uncertainty that you can play with. So, well, having said all of these, I suppose the main takeaway that I hope all of you can gain from this video is that to be a great venture capitalist, your experiences do not necessarily have to include, say, a fancy degree title or a previous job as an investment banker. For that reason, I think it's really crucial for you to not just limit yourself to this belief that you can only be a technical expert and not a business person. It really doesn't matter what your previous background or role was. The point I'm trying to make is that there will always be investing skills and experiences anywhere and everywhere. So it's your job to just figure out what you have. With that, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. If you found this helpful, I would really appreciate if you could just hit the like, subscribe and bell icon to support my channel. At the end of the day, I'm just this big believer that diversity is good business. So we really shouldn't underestimate different people's capability to contribute to a team. And if you happen to be someone who's looking for ideas on how you could expand your ways of thinking, do consider checking out my video on why I appreciate fiction where I simply wanted to discuss why I believe that reading fiction can help us to really think about situations from different perspectives. Till then, I wish you all a pleasant day ahead, be kind to yourself and others, and I shall see you in my next video. Bye-bye!